Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Allie Boone. Allie, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to be with us today. Oh, you bet. Thanks for having me. Allie, we are looking forward to talking to you and and hearing about some of the tough decisions you've made. But before we jump into that, I would love for you to give our audience a little bit of background about yourself as an entrepreneur and maybe tell us about where your focus is right now. Sure. So the short of my background is I did the whole corporate, you know, kind of the famous get good grades, go to school, get a job, secure job type of thing that landed me in a corporate job. My school was in aerospace engineering and that's the field I ended up in. And so I pretty much the first day I ever walked into my first engineering job, I just, I just cringed to say the least. It was a cubicle and I had also been flying airplanes. My office had been the sky and now I was in this great cubicle in these hideously ugly business casual clothes. And I just, I had a hunch that something about this was not going to work. So, but I didn't at the time know how I was going to get out of corporate. I didn't know if I was going to start a business or do real estate or, you know, kind of all the famous things that get you out. And I spent the next almost five years trying to figure it out. I was reading books like crazy. I was going to random weekend workshops. I was just trying to find, get some traction on something that could get me out of the cubicle. And so five years later, I walked out of the cubicle and I had started my own business. I started it roughly about a year before I left my corporate job. I was trying to hang on to that every Friday paycheck and health insurance as long as I could. And I started my business, Hipster Investments. It's a real estate investing company, which was ironic because I thought I had to do business or real estate. And then of all things, I started a real estate investing business. But yeah, it was really, you know, I was just, like I said, I was exploring everything. And then I kind of followed the pieces of the puzzle that started laying themselves out. And we just had our sixth anniversary. So I've been in business for six years. And about the first five years, we had facilitated about 18 million in real estate investment purchases. Yeah, and it's been a quite a journey. It's been an exciting journey. It's been stressful at times, but I was able to structure the business where I can really kind of maximize the things I do in life and set my own schedule and all that. And yeah, so that's kind of where I am today. So being and having this business for six years, I'm sure you have had many tough decisions along the way. Oh, yeah. And so what I want you to first do is start us off by like the worst outcome of a tough decision that you had to make. Meaning that I like to call the sore thumb tough decision. So one that did not have a very good outcome because I I know as entrepreneurs, a lot of times we focus on the successes and Mm -hmm. those are good to focus on too. But, you know, I also like to talk about some of the areas where maybe we got knocked in the teeth a little bit from our our decision making and, but we learn a lot of lessons through that. And that's where we can really grow is, is, is through some of those failures, not really failures, but you know, decisions that didn't really have that good of an outcome. So can you share one of those with us? Yeah, absolutely. So the way my business works, I'm basically a matchmaker. I connect buyers and sellers and there's a particular company that I work extremely close with. And a couple of the guys in that company were really kind of my mentors through this journey. So in the very first year, a lot of this kicked off by one of my mentors saying, hey, we have this great idea. We want you to head it up if you're up for it. We really think it could, you know, you're trying to start your business. We think this could bring in a lot of business for you. Yay, it's this great idea. And I was like, yay, I love great ideas. And so I pursued this particular task, if you will. It was kind of my, the, the thing I was heading up. And I followed this for probably about eight months. And I literally got one property sold, which if you do the math on that, that did not pay my rent or feed me very well at all. So, you know, it was kind of this thing of, I had been listening to them and what they thought would be the winner. And, you know, it was no fault of their own. They didn't realize it wasn't going to work out either. But along the way, some other things started picking up some other avenues of where I could get business. And I eventually had to make the decision to kind of tell them, you know, they're the ones that are more experienced. They supposedly know what they're doing. And I had to tell them, hey guys, you know, I don't, I don't think your plan is working. Like I want to pursue this other thing. And so for me, it was really a lesson in learning to listen to myself versus, you know, there's a lot of people out there who insist that they know what is best for you and what's going to work and all that. And it was really kind of my first lesson in learning to kind of decipher between what people are telling me and what I believe to be true. And sure enough, I went with what I 
thought would work and it I business all of a sudden jumped astronomically. I was actually able to pay rent and feed myself all of a sudden. So what are some of the lessons that you kind of learned through that? Well, the biggest lesson is not just putting all of my trust in what someone else tells me is going to work. And, you know, in that particular instance, I lost about eight months of business because I just thought that was going to be true. And, you know, when you're starting as an entrepreneur, oftentimes you really don't know what you're doing. And there are people that are more experienced, but, you know, and they may give you really good advice, but they may also not know exactly what's going to work for you. So the biggest lesson for me was really taking in all of the advice or the feedback or the ideas or whatever, but then also kind of running it through my own gut feelings about things and really just being able to take a stand and do what I believe to be the right thing. Yeah. And so let's shift a little bit here and talk about a tough decision that you had to make that had a really good and positive outcome in some of those lessons. Well, you know, my favorite one in the very first year of business, to say that I was a control freak before that would be kind of an understatement. I was a pilot. I was an engineer. Like, I was, I mean, I could probably say I was a control freak. And in those kind of professions, I can make anything happen. I can make the airplane do what I want it to do. I can make an engineering problem get solved. I can make anything happen. And the decision that I had to make in the first year of entrepreneurship, probably even in the first six months, was the decision to change that mindset. And because I went into this like an engineer or a pilot and I was trying to make something happen. I was trying to make my rent check, you know, my rent get paid every month, make the business happen. And I was stressing myself out. I mean, I was almost putting myself in a hole in the ground because I couldn't, entrepreneurship was something I couldn't make it happen. And so I woke up one day and I I had really thought about this and I made the decision to change my mindset to be that of, I can set my intentions, I can set what I'm kind of hoping to accomplish. And then after that, all I can do is the best that I can do every single day. And as soon as I decided that was gonna be my new mindset, again, everything changed. And the way that I tricked my mind, the control freak part of me into buying into this was I set it up like an experiment. I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna give myself to the end of the year And if things are not rolling by the end of the year, then I'll make decisions otherwise. But between now and then, I am not allowed to stress about anything. I'm just going to do the best that I can every day. And it worked. It tricked my mind into being comfortable with this idea. At the end of the year, things were going pretty well. So I extended my quote unquote experiment for six months. And then I kind of kept that going. And that was, that was easily the best decision I ever made was to really let go of the attachment of what was going to come out of it. And now I have a company that I couldn't have created it if I had tried. Like it, it really created itself once I made that decision. Did you have any like coaches or mentors that you had throughout this entire process or did you kind of do it all on your own? I absolutely had a mentor and I really don't think I would be where I was without him. He was great with the business advice and, you know, helping marketing ideas and all this kind of stuff. But more than anything, he was kind of my sanity check. Like there's been multiple times over the last six years where I've basically been standing at the edge of the cliff and be like, I'm ready to jump. And I let him know, Hey, I'm ready to jump. Okay. Bye. And he's like, okay, well, you know, let's, let's just back up from the edge of the cliff for a second. And, you know, really to have that emotional support because entrepreneurship, as most people know who have been through it, it's, it can be a roller coaster and it's really a sanity tester. So to have him there to help reel that in was really a saving grace. But then he was all, he, he became my mentor because I saw the business he was running and he had the lifestyle that I wanted. So I was like, wait a minute, I need to know what you're doing. So I was very apt to take his advice throughout my whole journey because he, his lifestyle is what I was hoping to achieve for myself. So Allie, from one control freak to another, do you have any other <laughs> tips on how to trick your mind in any other, <laughs> in any other areas? Woo, there's more people out there than just me. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you know, my absolute, well, kind of what I said, my absolute favorite trick is setting things up like an experiment. And so let's say that I want to, as a business owner, I want to try a new marketing something or another. And, you know, maybe it costs a good bit of money. Maybe I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of fear around it. Like, ooh, should I do this? I don't know. The trick that I would do in that case is, look, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but let's try this. Okay control brain. Let's get the best of both worlds here. So we're going to try this, but we're only going to try it for six months. 
we're just going to see how it goes. Worst case, we lose the money for six months, but we just do it for six months. And at the end of six months, we see what's going on. And if things are going well and we like the results, then we'll keep going. If not, cool, no bigs. We'll just cut it off right there. No harm done. And it's really part of that is telling yourself, it's, it's kind of a trick to tell yourself, like, what is the worst case scenario? Like a lot of times when we have fears, when you really break down the worst case scenario, it's actually not that bad. So if I pay for this marketing excursion for six months and let's say I lose, I don't know, 10 or $20,000 and that is absolutely the worst thing that happens. I mean, that kind of sucks, but it's not that terrible either. So in my experience, setting up like an experiment has really, it takes the pressure off and it allows me to try things that I may not otherwise try if I have some fears or hesitations or whatever. It's kind of like a throw it to the wind and see what happens, but without, you know, just freely throwing it to the wind and losing everything. Yeah, I love that. And I think the basis behind that is really just changing your perspective and the way that you look at things Mm -hmm. and not, I'm trying something that's going to be out of my control, but, you know, shifting that perspective to what if I find a really awesome new way of advertising or what if I find a really awesome new revenue stream or whatever it is that you're experimenting with. So I really like that. And I think that that does help people like myself that maybe don't naturally enjoy new things or new or challenges or being uncomfortable I play those mind games on myself quite a bit oh yeah well and it's kind of a it's a catch-22 I feel like with entrepreneurs because so often entrepreneurs get into entrepreneurship because we're used to being in control we're we like problem solving we we are adventurous you know we're smart enough to do this kind of thing but a lot of those traits are also what kind of bite us along the way too so Mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a psychology game really for sure can you talk a little bit about the strategies that you use when you are faced with a difficult decision oh um difficult decision i think the biggest strategy is to for me (laughs) is to sleep on it i very quickly you know if something shows up in my inbox or this you know this decision presents itself in front of my face I can very quickly react like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, no, I don't want to. Oh, I. uh," And then I, for some reason, think that I have to respond right that second. And, you know, it's it's much like emotions travel through. Like once I let the emotions kind of go away and I get a clear head about it, then I can kind of not only gauge better which way I want to go, but I can also kind of feel it a little better. Like, I don't know if it's a gut feeling or whatever, but you know, if I go to sleep and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll kind of see how I feel when I wake up quite often I'll wake up or the next day when I'm clear headed, I just kind of am swayed one way or another. So I don't, it's not a very technical answer, but sleeping on it has often helped me because I find that when I snap react to something, that's when things get a little hairy. I really appreciate that step-by-step process. (laughs) (laughs) i'm a a super technical how-to kind of person (laughs) well you know though and i was just thinking about and forgive me for going a little off track but we've been doing on sunday i've been doing a kind of a a discussion of some of the concepts in a book called blink i don't know if you're familiar with that Mm -hmm. or not but the foundation of the book is about how our subconscious mind is actually a lot better at processing things than we give it credit for a lot of times we don't like to go or we discount our gut feelings, you know, but I think that might be the basis of, you know, sleeping on things is that it gives our subconscious time to process information when we don't realize that's what's happening. But I think that is truly what is going on. And then you wake up the next morning and you feel comfortable with a decision. Yeah. And it's actually a scientific thing that while we sleep, our subconscious is actually processing things. It's, it's why they say don't watch a horror movie or the news or whatever right before you go to sleep, because that's what your subconscious is going to work on. And that takes me back to my college days. I remember being in my engineering math classes, like Calc 3 or something just heinous. And I couldn't figure out the solution to one of the math problems. And I would wake up the next morning in kind of one of those half sleeps. Like, it's like watching my brain figure out the problem and I'd wake up with the answer and I was like, seriously, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> but like one of the biggest decisions I had to make in this journey and to your point was what to name my company. And quite honestly, Hipster Investments is kind of a ridiculous name. Not going to lie. Like it's, it's, I'm like, seriously, this is what I went with. <laughs> and it was really this matter of going with this 
fairly ridiculous name versus something a lot more professional, a lot more classy, whatever it was. And I struggled with it for probably a month because every time I thought I needed to do the classy professional name, I just had this big pull of like, just name it hipster. And I was like, but that's stupid. And I kind of became schizophrenic about it because it's like, which voice is telling me which way to go? And I slept on it multiple nights and for like a month or so. And then I finally went with what my gut was saying, which was hipster and it's panned out phenomenal. But it, it really, in that case, took me a month to differentiate which voice was talking to me about what I should do. All right, we're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our show sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk to Allie about some of her favorites as it relates to her life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, we help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles, such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back with Ali Boone, and we want to talk to you a little bit first about technology in this series of quick questions and answers called the trifecta. So start us off by telling us what is your most favorite technology that you use in business every day that helps make your life easier as an entrepreneur? Oh boy, I am so technologically inept. I actually just upgraded my cell phone for my 2012 phone, and it's my new technology phone is stressing me out. So I'm pretty basic on the technology front. I would say, well, I don't know if this is actually technology or not. All of my employees are actually virtual assistants. So there's a program that I use to find them and hire them and they get paid through that system and everything. And I literally use that every single day because my employees all work every day and that keeps kind of the whole ball rolling. I don't Which one do you use? Technology? <laughs> I use Upwork. It used okay. to be called Odesk. Yep. Yeah, they actually merged, I think, with uh, another freelance or elance company or something and created the Upwork platform. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a saving grace for me. There's kind of a whole science of how I found to work it because it can, you know, there's a lot of people on there. Not everyone's going to be fantastic, but yeah, it's, it's, it's literally the thing that keeps me going. What is a, a quote that you've heard that's helped you as an entrepreneur? My favorite quote of all time, and I think about it every single day, and it kind of alludes to something I was talking about earlier, is don't take advice from people you wouldn't trade shoes with. And it goes back to that idea of when you start your business and you have all these great ideas, there's going to be so many people telling you what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing and how you should do it. And for some reason, I don't know why everyone feels so inclined to explain everything to you. But because there's so many voices, I had to learn to differentiate which ones to listen to. And somebody told me this quote of don't take advice from people you wouldn't trade shoes with. And it really resonated with me. So anytime anyone gives me advice or ideas or whatever you want to call it, I really kind of sit back and look what I want to trade shoes with this person. So like I'm in real estate investing. And if my goal is lifestyle design and freedom and sleeping in and all this kind of stuff. Do I really want to take advice from a guy in a suit sitting behind a desk Monday through Friday? Uh, you know, maybe he says something good, but I'm going to be kind of leery about that. And like I said, with my mentor, he was living the lifestyle that I wanted. So I was certainly going to start taking his advice very quickly. What about a book that you've read that you would recommend? I think all business owners, I don't even know. I mean, maybe I was just dumb in the beginning and didn't understand these and everybody, these concepts and everyone else did, but I don't see how anyone could succeed in business without having read the E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. I love that book. Mm -hmm. I, I think about it all the time. And even outside of business, I think about it. It just, it's such a, such simple concepts, but literally the game changing ones also. 
Well, and it's interesting in that book is that, you know, he, he talks about, you know, systematizing and creating processes and things like that in your offices or in your business. And these are things that have been going on for decades. What most people did was, is they didn't get to that point until they started to get to the point of expanding and expansion. And if you can take those same concepts and put them into even your smallest of small businesses, right. it still makes the business run better and allows you to grow faster and makes everything so much easier. Yeah, I totally agree. And the part about that book that really changed everything for me was the idea of to su succeed in a business, you need the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. And it's cool if you're not some of those, but if you're not, hire people to fill those spots because all three of those roles have to be complete or present or whatever you want to call it. And so like for me, I'm pretty much all entrepreneur with a little bit of technician. And so one of my primary employees, she's my manager, like she keeps me tethered. And so it was kind of a, you know, it was almost relieving to find out I didn't have to be all three of those things because I'm not naturally a manager. I hate it. It just, I, it makes me miserable. And so instead of me trying to become that thing that I'm not, I just hire that position. So that was really mind blowing for me. And what's the next thing for you right now on your vision or dream board? I am currently attempting to finish writing my first book. I've had an ebook out for a few years now and that was great. And I've always wanted to write a book and I've probably started about four of them, but I admittedly never wanted to have to figure out the publishing process, but I've now met some people who are going to be doing all of that for me. So I am busting it to get this book done. I want my first one out. And how can the listeners reach out to you if they want more information from you or try to follow you more? Well, I love talking to people, so you can always email me directly. It's Allie, A-L-I, at hipsterinvestments.com. Tell me you found me on this podcast. I'll give a shout out to Dan and Danae. And then my company's site is hipsterinvestments.com. I've also recently started doing business consulting, and that website is just alliboon.com. so A-L-I-B-O-O-N-E.com. But yeah, either of those sites or just my direct email, you can reach out anytime. Well, again, thank you so much for taking your time out of your schedule to be with us here today on the podcast. And I look forward to continuing to follow you and, and watch you as you continue to grow as an entrepreneur and also look forward to having you on a future episode as you continue to grow too. Yeah, absolutely. I would love it. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.